Welcome to Electron Online. In this example, you may not realize what these two parametric equations represent. x equals h plus r times the cosine of t, and y equals k plus r times the sine of t. What does that look like? What kind of equation will, will we end up with when we try to solve for an equation where y equals some function of x? Which means we need to eliminate the variable t. So what we're going to do, just like before, we're going to solve in this first equation t in terms of x. So starting with x equals h plus r times a cosine of t, we can then write that r times a cosine of t is equal to x minus h. Now we divide both sides by r, so we get the cosine of t is equal to x minus h divided by r. And finally, t is equal to the inverse cosine of x minus h over r. And then again, we're going to utilize this particular identity, that the sine of the inverse cosine of a is equal to the square root of 1 minus a squared. We're going to need that when we take this and plug that into our second parametric equation. So instead of t, we're going to replace t by what t is equal to based upon what we found in our first equation. So there we're going to write that y is equal to k plus r, instead of the sine of t, we're going to write the sine of the inverse cosine of the quantity x minus h divided by r. And then we're going to utilize this identity right here, so therefore we can write this that y is equal to k plus r times the sine of the inverse cosine is equal to the square root of 1 minus this expression squared, x minus h over r quantity squared. Okay, so what we're going to do next is the following. We're going to write that y is equal to k plus r times the square root of r squared minus the quantity x minus h squared all divided by r squared. So what I did here is write over the common denominator. This can then come outside the radical sign and r divided by the square root of r squared. Well, that cancels out. So we get y is equal to k plus the square root of r squared minus the quantity x minus h squared. Next, what we're going to do is move the k to the other side. So we have y minus k is equal to the square root of r squared minus x minus h quantity squared. And now if we square both sides, we get the following. We get y minus k quantity squared is equal to r squared minus the quantity x minus h squared. And finally, when we move this over to the other side, that becomes positive. So we end up with x minus h squared plus y minus k squared is equal to r squared. And now we realize that this is also the equation of a circle with radius r, but in this case the origin is no longer at zero, or I should say the center of the circle is no longer at the origin, but the center of the circle is now at the location of x equals h and y equals k. So in other words, what we just found was that there's some point out here, and around that point there's a circle of radius r, and the point right here is at location h, k. This is the x-axis and the y-axis. Of course, I took an arbitrary point on the x-y plane, but you can see now that this is simply an equation of a circle with radius r, where the center of the circle is at h and k. And again, you may not realize right away when you look at the parametric equations what we're dealing with, but if you follow this technique, solve for one of the variables in terms of t, the parametric, equation, the parametric variable t, and then plug it into the other equation and then solve, you can then usually get the equation you're looking for. As you can see, it can get quite complicated, but if you hang with it and you solve it using this technique, you should usually get the answer. And that's how it's done.